Nice, I think. Yes! Hey guys! <laughs> What's up? I'm James Hake. This is the Hake Report. And we're gonna be... S well, I'm starting kind of on time. I'm a little late, technically, because I like to be here 8.30 or whatever. That way I have all the stuff to Joel on time. I think I gave you the items, though, Joel. Let me know if you have them or not. Sweet. So, guys, um, we're five minutes till the hour. A little, actually more like four minutes until the hour. What's up to Ryan Moon, Ace Kurtz, Jeanette Korzenko, Korzenko the one who traumatized me about using the, <laughs> using, uh, air quotes, Skip, Niner 3000, Sean Sweet, Sean Swindon. What's up, all you guys? So, I am, sh I should be streaming on Periscope. Yep, I am. YouTube, dlive.tv slash The Hake Report. And um, I think it was Friday or, or at some point, Super Dave is like, James, bro, you got to go to two hours, bro. One hour is not enough, bro. <laughs> I know, Super Dave. I'm going to be starting. Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to be starting the two-hour show, like, uh, what do I call it? After the move. Doesn't that make sense? And who knows when the move happens? It could be next month. It could be this month. Because it's early this month, right? Oh, no, it's late this month. <laughs> it couldn't be this month, hopefully. That would be traumatic. And um, all that stuff. So we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully it'll be sooner than later. And then you'll get the two hours out of me every day. And um, I'm tossing around the idea of, of what I want to do with the Sunday show. Because because of me, Joel has to be here. Dylan has to be here. And uh, they don't mind it. I don't mind making them. <laughs> but um, I don't know. Maybe I could do it sometimes from home or from on the road or wherever I am. I don't know. And I still got to figure out, maybe I need a, I need a smart intern, because I don't like to learn. I like to learn a little bit, but I don't like to learn a lot. Um, on how to incorporate Discord into, like, getting people on the Discord with me as, like, guests or callers or co-hosts or whatever. Kind of like Ralph Retort does and all them. That's just the idea. Um, so... I don't have a lot of news today. In fact, I don't have any news today, but I do have um, like this recap that I'm going to be talking about. And you guys can call in too. But um, I don't want to... I don't want to get... Um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I will be doing the, the, um, the super chats. Like the... <laughs> The thing that I always forget to do, the treasure chest on DLive. <laughs> what, what's that? What's that question? Let's take a poll. Oh, you want... <laughs> My de facto producer, before we get started, would like to do a poll. What do you think... What's, what is the Trump question? What do you think of the Trump question? How he's doing? Oh, okay. What do you guys think of how Trump's doing? Because I had some caller... I had some guests who hate Trump, or seem like they're disappointed in Trump, prejudging, in my opinion. And uh, I don't know, especially from the right, if you're on the right and you have criticisms of Trump, or you admire Trump. I would like to hear from you. That is a nice idea. Okay, so... Okay, we're not started yet. Good. Um, so what's up to Twitch? I am live on Twitch, that's cool. And on Mixer.com slash The Hake Report. Twitch.tv slash The Hake Report and Facebook.com slash The Hake Report. What's up to Jay? I don't know. I'm assuming he's here. I don't see him actually yet. Jeff, hey, in Buffalo, New York. So, guys, we're going to get started on this. If you're just tuned in now, don't fret because I was just chit chatting a little bit with the people and talking about the future, which doesn't exist. Thank you, Jesse. <laughs> But let's get started on this. Mm -hmm. 
Is that too loud? What's up, guys? I'm James Hake. This is The Hake Report. I'm going to be talking about, like, a little recap of this week. I talked to Richard Spencer. He thinks Trump is a liar. He called Trump a liar. I got sick. Women are waking up, even. And that's cool on the Jason Lee Peterson show. And it is nice to see them wake up. Oh, it's The Hake Report. The Hake Report. La, la, la. Why is it just Spencer's face, asks Dark Side of the Bear. What's up, guys? This is Sunday, January 26th, 2020. Live at 9 a.m. on Hake's channels on, uh, let me just go to Restream so I can rattle them off. YouTube, DLive, Twitch, Mixer, Facebook, Periscope. What's up, all you guys? Appreciate you guys joining. So, now, let me get in, get right into this. Um... Be part of Bond, guys and gals. Announcement. Check out Church with Jesse Lee Peterson. 11 a.m. I am the producer of Church. I produce, I make it go online. And I make it go on the podcast and stuff. I summarize what happened. I, it's not like I direct Jesse a little bit. I yell at him at the beginning. I'm like, okay, 20 more seconds. <laughs> but other than that, I don't tell him, hey, talk about this. So I'm not that kind of producer. Just the online content producer. It's an hour after my show, 11 a.m. here in Los Angeles. Rebuildingtheman.com slash church. Come on down to our current location. There's no excuses if you're anywhere from uh, Vegas or eastern side of, or western side of Arizona. On closer. uh, Well, Sacramento's kind of far. Santa Barbara on closer. San Diego on closer. San Diego, I get it. It's it's a drive. A couple hours. But in the morning, there's no traffic. Heading back down, I don't know. <laughs> You're on your own. But you have peace, right? It's a nice service. And so a lot of you guys do come up from San Diego and everywhere. Appreciate it. Our current location, as of the last 20 years, Bond, 6146 West Pico Boulevard, Los Angeles, California, 90035. We are moving soon. Thank you guys for the support for the Bond Building Fund. Also, make sure you're subscribed to Bond Rebuilding the Man YouTube channel, which is severely shadow banned and blacklisted by Google. Google is evil, in the words of the great Alex Jones. And to my faithful supporter, commenter, you know, the Jesse Lee Peterson supporter, commenter, um, Willie Pal- Palomino, I think, in the chat or in the comment section. Don't be disappointed that I respect Alex Jones. I respect what he's built, and he's a whole lot better than the liberal media. He's a whole lot more reliable, to be honest, than the liberal media. So, everybody gets some stuff wrong, right? So, um, many of you don't know this. Bond, and you can get my, you're looking at my, uh, the Hague Report sticker on my little, um, my laptop. You can get that, go to thehakereport.com, and then click on Teespring. It's cool. So, um, anyways, Bond is Jesse Lee Peterson's non- nonprofit since 1990, before a lot of you guys were born, or when a lot of you guys were in a fallen state. We offer counseling, Entrepreneur Academy, shout out to Joel, and me, and Esmon. <laughs> Well, I don't know. He's not... I don't know. Whatever. Men's forums, women's forums, monthly. Those are excellent. Men's conference, um, annually, around Father's Day weekend. Town hall... Last year was so cool. All of them are really nice, but um, last year topped them all. Town hall forums, where um, the people get to speak, get it off their chest in person, and discuss. Go to rebuildingtheman.com or call 800-411-BOND, B-O-N-D, which is 800-411-2663. We're having our 30th anniversary 
late summer, early fall, to be determined, time, date, uh, um, location, to be determined. That will be the major event of 2020. Not this dumb election. It's in the bag. <laughs> you know, Trump has it. Uh, and you can, if, you, if you're just tuning in now, my de facto producer, Dylan, if you're on the right, right, especially, if you're on the left, you can call in. But if you're on the right, I would like to hear your thoughts, how Trump is doing. It's like almost going to be halfway through his term. Well, this, at the end of this year. Has he kept his promises? Is he keeping them? Or is he a liar? Do you think like what Richard Spencer, I had Richard Spencer on my show on Friday. He said, I'm tired of the lies. I'd rather have an open communist, which Bernie Sanders lies and says that he's not an open communist, <laughs> but he likes Bernie on his best days. Um, wow. Anyways, so I would like to hear from you uh, on that. But anyways, um, the 30th, Bond 30th anniversary will be coming up, and it's going to be a nice big event. Although, so that'll be later in the year, midway through the year, we'll do a little Father's Day um, weekend thing, you know, the men's conference. Um, so to everyone I've been telling about the men's conference, do still come, but the 30th anniversary should be awesome as well. A few months later. So, weekly recap. It was an eventful week. As Jesse Lee Peterson would say, maybe. It was an amazing week. By the way, I know, guys, I am delinquent on Discord. Jesse Lee Peterson has a Discord started by... Um, what is it called? Shout out to Skip, by the way. I don't know if I said hi to you, Skip. And, and Nick Lichick. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce your name. Um, what was I just saying? Oh, Discord. We have a Discord. If you look in the, um, in the uh, description, at the bottom of the description of my YouTube video that's currently on there, the bottom of the description, Discord, HTTPS, colon, slash, slash, Discord, dot, GG, slash, six, lowercase d, three, lowercase a, lowercase h, lowercase n, three. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> it's plain. But you click on the Discord, and it, it's not so much for older people. If you want to learn, that's great. That's cool. And that's imp very impressive. But a lot of young people are on Discord already. And, or a lot of people may be interested in joining it and chatting a little bit. I go on there, I've gone on there sometimes to chat. Blatt Salad is always calling me and I'm always rejecting. Sorry, Blatt Salad. He's over in, in um, Australia. He had a really excellent call. Alex, really, from Australia, I think is his name. Sorry, Blatt Salad, if I'm doxing you. But, um, <laughs> Skip, that seems like a barbed comment, um, about the flaming Chinaman, uh, Chinese man. He called, I call him Chinaman. Skip doesn't use that term. But, um, yeah, I've, I haven't been on Discord that much. I've been sick and different things, busy. Last Sunday I ate a bad burrito from El Cartel, you might have heard. It tasted good, but less than... Five to 11 hours out, I was throwing up like crazy. Chills, fever, miserable. Good, mor good morning, Linda. Hey, beers, 723. I didn't eat at all Monday. I mean, a, a lot of you guys fast, right? So it's no big deal not to eat for a day, but I didn't eat at all. And it wasn't because I was fasting. It was just because, well, I, I guess I was in effect, but... Wasn't like on purpose, except just sips of Coke, Seven Up, Pepto Bismol, <laughs> and some Tylenol. I took down some Tylenol. <laughs> I had Jello pudding, chicken soup on Tuesday, so I got 
majorly sick. It was like a 24 hour or 36 hour flu thing. I don't know. Definitely feel a lot better. And now I'm hungry, actually, to be honest. <laughs> uh, so, um, anyways, let me get to this stuff. Like, this is the real content. Even women are waking up. Isn't that nice? Um, uh, I'm referring to the Jesse Lee Peterson show. Um, which is like a been a big part of my life, right? I listened when I was sick. I slept through the show. Slept through even what was supposed to be my show. Thank God. And um, then I listened to the audio podcast. And it's the first time I really listened to an audio, a three-hour audio podcast. Oh, three hours, right? Awesome call from, I think, Crystal was her name, maybe from Phoenix or something. I may be misremembering it. First hour, January 20th. Check it out. Nick, the new producer of the Jesse Lee Peterson show, put it out on as its own thing called, like, Alpha Woman or something. Um, and um, she, I think she had had an abortion, I think, then a miscarriage, then, um, unless I'm... And then, unless I'm making it up, I know she's married to her, her who was her boyfriend, the, the man who was her boyfriend, now her husband. And I may be making this part up, but she's pregnant again or something. Or she was looking to get pregnant again. That's cool. And maybe I made some of that up. Like, But the gist of it, she's, she basically called in and said, I'm one of those evil women in the past. And I was one of those evil women in the past. And now she's a decent woman. And dang, you should check it out. It's a really good call. Um, Asmador, who is a faithful viewer on D Live and a host himself, called and um, well, he, he didn't call. He gave a diamond on D Live, Jesse Lee Peterson's D Live, and gave the super chat super chat address to Jesse. It's amazing watching you help people. True. Or maybe he said amazing. I'm not sure. <laughs> and I agree that um, you have to be cold hearted, hard hearted, blind, evil, shallow, and like, I'm pretty shallow, but I still see this part, anyways, to not see and appreciate, like, Jesse waking people up. You have to be like, you have to be spiritually dead. I think you have to have a prideful, arrogant, which prideful and arrogant, basically the same thing, but I'm emphasizing it, judgment on Jesse Lee Peterson. And it just proves that Jesse is right about taught Christianity because a lot of these guys that are judging him are like, they call themselves Christians and they're like, talk about the Bible and don't realize that what Jesse's preaching is exactly biblical, but dumb. They're full of it. It reminds me of, um, it's another reason why guys like Vosh, who doesn't claim to be a Christian, right? But Vosh, whom I interviewed two Fridays ago, he's an atheist, I think. He's like a Marxist and yet also an anarchist. He doesn't believe in countries existing. He doesn't want believe, love America. He, he claims to love the American people. The people. He claims that he loves everybody, but that's just that fake, shallow love. It doesn't mean anything. It's just just feel-good stuff. Um, it just proves that that's what they're full of, is, is not the real love. And that's why people don't really hear Jesse when he's talking about love sometimes. I mean, like, loving the illegals means sending them out. <laughs> For example, right? By the way... Um, <laughs> it's so embarrassing when, uh, at least for me, I don't know, when Jesse Lee Peterson makes fun of you when you're answering his biblical questions. <laughs> this is kind of a recap of this week during the week. Um, to be honest, I don't know if he was making fun of me, though, or just reacting. <laughs> his biblical question was, what does it mean to be a Christian? And, <laughs> and he asked me, and I said, it means to be like Jesus. <laughs> and he goes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to imitate it. 
and then I'm gonna describe it for the people watching on listening on podcast because you can't see my face, right? He went like this. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> he, like one eyebrow raised, and he had this like concerned, worried, not worried, but uh confused look. <laughs> Maybe concern for my mental health. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, um, oh, man. <laughs> and I elaborated a little because I was trying not to be ashamed. I could elaborate a lot, but I feel like if I were to elaborate, then I'd be trying to save face from it. <laughs> I know I'm right. <laughs> you edited that up on a clip. <laughs> uh, I know I'm right. <laughs> it's in the Bible, little Christ. Um, but it's funny that, uh, where, where am I? <laughs> but I don't know why I was embarrassed then if I know I'm right. <laughs> it's funny how you get mad at being embarrassed too. Like I hate the feeling of, or used to hate the feeling of being embarrassed. And mad at the person who made you embarrassed. But then like really... Is your own fault or your own issues causing your embarrassment feelings, right? And one thing about Jesse is he doesn't take himself too seriously. And I think that uh, that that's one difference between me and Jesse. And maybe the reason why I don't have as many fans yet is that I tend to take myself a little bit more too seriously sometimes. Maybe that's an idea. I don't know. But anyways, um, that's like he's humble. So anyways. Doesn't take himself too seriously. In that, he's humble. Doesn't really care <laughs> if uh, if he says the wrong word or mispronounces it. It's part of the charm. Anyways. So, <laughs> looking forward to seeing that highlight. <laughs> Relive it. Um, so, Richard Spencer. I interviewed Richard Spencer. Atheist and Trump hater, I think would be fair to say. He was a Trump supporter, so it's, I'm not saying he's like a, a forever Trump hater. No, I did not, I did not smoke any of, uh, first of all, Tommy Rich is in the comment, in the live chat. I think he's kind of a hater, but he's kind of funny sometimes. Faithful viewer, I think. Appreciate you joining my sh stream, by the way, Tommy Rich. So I don't know, but he, he said, Hake smoked some of Jesse's stash. First of all. Jesse doesn't have a stash. Second of all, no, I didn't. Third of all, no, I haven't in, like, years. And before that, it was just, like, once on, once on purpose, twice, if you count the once by accident, I think. <laughs> when they didn't tell me that the vape was actually, had something in it. Um, and three... For three, um, Tommy Rich, there's no I in Jesse. J-E-S-S-E. Anyways. <laughs> oh, yeah. Another recap before I get back to this Richard Spencer thing. Trump hater. Uh, <laughs> Skip said, tell us more about cracking the whip. <laughs> and he gave, like, the black power fist, I guess. That happened this week, too. Um, this week, some black guy called into my show, calling himself Kunta Quinte from the plantation is where he claimed to be calling from. And I am honestly not a big fan of, call it, call it, um, call it being old fashioned or picking up some of that, uh, old fashionedness and, um, down to earthness maybe from Jesse. Lee Peterson, <laughs> but I'm not a big fan of people calling in with their fake names. Beta Boot Camp I like, right? Because it's such a name. It's such a like a Jesse Lee Peterson show slash the Hake Report name. Um, although I think I know his real name. And then um, Donning Armor, I'm I'm not a huge fan of having to call him Donning Armor. I think I would prefer to call him. Whatever his name is, Chris or something. <laughs> but I just deal with it because I'm weak. But um, he call he he's the first time calling in as Kunta Quinte, which is a reference to what movie? Joel doesn't even know. I don't think. Um, 
It's not the color purple, I don't think. It's some slave movie. Do, uh, Dylan, do you know? Um... Anyways. Roots. <laughs> What's up with you millennials not knowing this stuff, this black stuff? I thought you guys were into black culture. Uh, he thinks, uh... Hot Computer Smell thinks Kunta actually was Jason from New York. <laughs> Um, maybe, but he got mad when, like, okay, he calls in clowning around like he's Kunta Quinte. Well, he's not clowning, he's acting like, trying to be serious, so, I guess, and confronting me and Jesse and why you guys talk about black, it's always negative. And then I'm like, listen, I'm like, listen, boy. <laughs> kind of like how in the movie Roots, he wants to play Kunta Quinte. What else am I supposed to play but the slave master? I'm assuming because I haven't watched the movie Roots. So, yeah, thank you, Sion. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Tabor J. Eaton says, How can you not know Roots? He white. <laughs> but uh, I don't care. So I'm all. <laughs> What's your name, boy? And, he, and it's in this scene, I hear because I've never witnessed it, but I've just heard people re reenacting it. He goes, Kunta, Kunta Quinte. I said, What's your name, boy? Kunta, Kunta Quinte. And even, I'm even getting uh, texts saying roots. And, and so the slave master is extra mad because this guy is being obstinate. This slave is not accepting his Christian name. I said, what's your name, boy? James Master. <laughs> and he turned into, in, he no longer talked African. He talked Southern Black. <laughs> I don't know. It's just so funny. And it's only funny because, like, everybody was laughing. You had to be there, right? <laughs> but to me, it's just funny. And then, and then... Kunta Quinte, what he called himself, said, well, you wouldn't say that to my face. I'm like, would you? I'm like, you're right, because you wouldn't call yourself Kunta Quinte to my face. And he's like, yeah, he threatened me. Oh, no. You think he threatened me, Jib Jab? So he's, he, I said, would you assault me if I were to do that, joke around in your face? And he's all... He kind of said something to the effect of, what else would I do? <laughs> Anthony911 says, Jay Hake is getting a kick out of reenacting that whipping scene. Uh, and I said, oh, I'm the cracker because I cracked the whip. <laughs> I'm not drunk, Tommy Rich. I'm just having fun. Um, so, and I didn't get drunk last night either. So, um... He's all, you, I, I'm basically, I'm a black man, and a white man comes up, and I'm thinking that he's cool with me like that, and I'm supposed to just take it? I said, yeah. Um, what else did I say? If, if you just keep a straight face and not laugh along with me, it's egg on my face for doing a dumb joke. If anything, I look bad. But he's all, he's at, he didn't think that that's the case. <laughs> I don't know. What did you think, Joel? <laughs> or did you have an opinion on it? Uh, <laughs> Ice cream poopy pants. I'm not drunk, Salazar. Huh? Um, yeah, I thought it was a little silly. Yeah, it was silly. <laughs> it was. It was a little overboard. I agree with that. But anyways, that, he didn't need. <laughs> he yeah, didn't need he to didn't get that to, serious. Yeah, he didn't have to get all crazy. Especially since he's the one that called himself Kunta Quinta. He basically asked for it. So. Yeah, I, I wasn't a fan of it, but I just thought it was kind of funny. And then I couldn't help myself but laugh because I'm just like my mama. I'm silly. <laughs> so, um, I am going to open the treasure chest on D Live. All right, guys? Uh, at 8 30, ring that bell thing to remind me. Or once you remember, ring it. <laughs> so, what you guys think of Trump? That's great. Uh, let me know. 
Um, so I interviewed Richard Spencer just a week after I talked to Vosh. It was Friday, one, Friday, January 24th, Richard Spencer, the alt-right guy, if you're not familiar with him. Alt-right being, like, basically, I guess, white nationalist type of a guy. A week after I interviewed Vosh, the guy who hates America, and he's pansexual, meaning he, he'll get with any person that he thinks is hot. Disgusting. And Richard Spencer was supposed to be on MLK Day, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, Monday, but I had food poisoning. So I had some interesting feedback from Bible Go To Guy on this uh, in Richard Spencer interview, and as well as Asmodor on his Friday night special. Thank you, Asmodor, um, for the review. I'd like to talk with uh, Richard Spencer again uh, next year, maybe, uh, a year from now, after Trump is re inaugurated. Um, let me quickly read this, pull up, uh, Bible go to you guys text. Can you kind of zoom in on it, scroll through it a little bit? Let me first get to springtime out of Georgia. Speaking of names, is this a real name or a hippie? Did, were her parents hippies or his parents? I'm assuming her. Um, or is that, and is that a real name? Or is it, <laughs> or is it a uh, protect your your self name? And then I will get to Bible Go to guys text. Interesting feedback. Springtime out of Georgia. Oh man. Yes. Hey. Yes. I use Springtime in the chat room. My name's Vicky. Okay. Nice to hear from you, yes. Vicky slash Springtime. Yes. Yeah, good to. I just called to put my two cents in about um, how the president's doing. Um, I really, really, really think that people are getting a little too complacent, and I think the Democrats want us complacent yeah. so we won't show up to vote. And I cannot stress, especially to young people, please go vote. Yeah, you know, that's a very good point. And they're not just trying to make people complacent. They're trying to make people doubt and turn away from Trump. Yes. Because and it's very subtle, and it's some of it's in your face, but a lot of it's very subtle. I think that's actually happening even on the right, and I don't know if the people on the right are aware that they're being used in that way by evil to uh, say things that aren't true. Because Trump has not turned away from us. You can say no, he hasn't. You can say that he should be um, cracking down on this um, social media censorship, and he should be doing this or that, and that's true. But he has not turned away from us. He's been f- quite faithful to us. And he's yes, been he has. working to do his, um, that's my opinion, uh, working to do his um, whatever. There are a lot of people that are either, I, I got a text from one of my guys, <laughs> one of my uh, friends who said that he knows a Mexican Trump supporter, Trump 2016 guy, who's not going to vote for Trump in 2020. And it's because... They, you know, a lot of these guys on the right, they think, where's the wall? They think the illegals are still here. They think birthright citizenship is still happening, you know, because they think that he could just do an executive order and end birthright citizenship as if it wouldn't be a major fight. And suddenly it's all gone away just that quickly. Yeah. Yeah, it's like an unrealistic expectation of of how the the presidency is supposed to go. Asmodor may... That's how all of society is supposed to go because... We're being given everything so quickly, quickly. We think everything, or the young people, younger people think yeah. things, you know, have it now, have it now. And it just doesn't work that way. Yep, very true. And he's done so much to change the culture, bring back manhood, I think. Yes. Oh, I'm seeing it more and more. Yeah. That's I'm cool. It more. It's very refreshing, and I, I really like it that guys are now, they're not afraid to open the door and... It's just, it's just a good thing. Yeah. It's a good thing. And I just wanted to holler at you. I'm working out in the yard, but I'm always listening to you guys. Appreciate that springtime slash Vicky. Yeah, appreciate you so much. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Bye. Nice. And uh, that Mexican guy that I was telling you about who, who was not for Trump 2020. Talk about shooting yourself in the foot because you're mad at the guy about Trump. He feels like it's a consensus, and I do too. I sense that there is a consensus among, among um, a cohort, let's call it, I don't know what, to, what you call it, 
um, that uh, he that he um, is failing them or lied to them or whatever. And <laughs> I don't see the lies. Where's the, where are the lies? Um, people ask, why did he put neocons in the White House? Because he's an he's an establishment guy. He he's always respected the establishment. He's he respects Alex Jones for what he built. He respects the New York Times and used to read or used to anyways used to read the New York Times every day, in the morning, five thirty in the morning. Read the New York Times, and then uh, get to work. So he's like a he's a boomer. What do you expect? Of course he's gonna have, and it's. It's a shame that he um, let go of uh, Michael, General Michael Flynn, who was a MAGA, was a real, I think, nationalist guy. Um, they claim that they claim that he's doing the opposite of draining the swamp. No, that's not true. He is draining the swamp. He's look at all the Republicans, rhinos, who are retiring. That's draining the swamp, in my opinion. And then look at the rotating door in the White House. That's draining the swamp. Yes, he's hiring them, but then he's firing them. And yeah, they do a little bit of damage. But he could put neocons in... He doesn't even know the term neocon, I bet you. <laughs> um, so that's, that's my take. What else? Um, Richard called them lies, what Trump said. Where are the lies? What lie? I don't know if Trump lying, as far as I can tell, he's worked, t he hasn't stopped working towards, um, on keeping his promises the best he can. And he's a make things happen man. Um, who else, who, name somebody who's, who makes it happen more than Trump. Throughout his whole life, he's been doing that. Even when he was in the fallen state, he was a make things happen man. Um, Yes, a few things I'm not wild about. And I almost, and I wish that he almost never heeded advice from the rhinos or neocons, whatever you call them, like Paul Ryan, liars. But you have to work with people. And in order to work with people, you kind of have to have those so called uh, um, uh, neocons <laughs> a little bit. Um, most of the people in DC are. Corrupt, incompetent, untrustworthy backstabbers. In fact, they're a reflection of you and me. They're a reflection of America. You think that you would be more f faithful than Trump has been? Um, when is he making free speech on the internet happen? I don't know. Wait, can, a, can a president actually do that <clears throat> unilaterally? I don't know. But you, you guys sound like uh, naggers. Like, um, just complaining like, uh, backseat drivers or something, Asma, <clears throat> Asmador, excuse me, who is a Trump critic, but fellow fan of Jesse, he asked, and he has his criticisms of Trump, like I said, but he asked, has there been a better president since, and I forget what president he named, he said this on his Friday uh, show, has there been a president since, and he named some historical name, I think, or maybe, I don't know what name he named, and that's a good question. You need to be, like, realistic with your thinking, right? As opposed to Richard and a lot of you guys that are um, doubting Trump or complacent or, or turning on Trump a little bit. You feel like he's turned on you. He, Richard Spencer, overreacting, panicking, and fretting. Fretting, F-R-E-T-T-I-N-G, when it comes to Trump. Like a woman! <laughs> As Jesse would say. <laughs> uh, Richard Spencer's Twitter feed about the Iran situation. Um, after Trump killed that dude, uh, Soleimani. Um, Richard seemed be beside himself. Kind of like that guy, um, Michael Tracy, the liberal independent journalist whom I generally like and respect. He was, Michael Tracy just, something switched on him. And he, who... You guys may not be familiar with him, but he's generally a sane, if liberal, right? If liberal can be sane, right? Um, a sober-minded, not passion, dispassionate, right? Generally. I mean, as much as a liberal can be. 
um, guy, and he's didn't fall for the Trump Russia thing, didn't fall for the Trump impeachment thing, but yeah, he's a liberal, he's a Bernie supporter, Tulsi Gabbard supporter, uh, and he just went beside himself when Trump killed that guy, thinking, oh, this is crazy, we're gonna be in a war, and we're gonna get into regime change, and if that happens, I'll support Joe Biden over Donald Trump, which is insane. And, um, you know, you have Richard Spencer, who I interviewed Friday, saying that he is, thinks that he'll support Bernie, maybe. And it's crazy. Um, I'd like to talk with both of those guys a little bit more, though, by the way. That's how I see all these alt-right types. Uh, not all of them, but the ones that are, like, turning on Trump or the ones who are saying um, that they're not going to vote for him, especially. That's, like, beyond ridiculous. You're going to vote for him? Okay, fine. Complain all you want, but vote for him. But actually, quit complaining, to be honest, because you're hurting. You're, like, you're not providing a united front. Uh, this one's, this, I'm getting a text that says, Complacency is unconditional support. We are holding Trump accountable. That's love. <laughs> Whatever, man. <laughs> uh... But you're assuming things aren't, aren't happening when they are happening. For example, the wall. Like, you assume that it's not happening, but it is happening. Um, that's how I see not just the alt-right types, but Ann Coulter, who's just complaining about Trump. On one hand, I like that she, uh, these people are, you know, try, trying to hold Trump accountable or whatever. But it's basically nagging about no wall when there is a wall being built, continuing to be built. Anyway, I ran out of time with Richard Spencer, but maybe next time if we have a better connection, especially. And it's more than 2.5 miles in New Wall. It's, it's ridiculous. It's a, stupid, it's a stupid talking point to say, oh, only 2.5 miles in New Wall. Um, because replacing the, the old wall where it's porous and people can just get through, that's key. I mean, the places where there's already wall are perhaps the places that most need the wall, the a real wall. Um, you saw it stop those three Mexicans. They were stuck on top of a slippery wet wall in the middle of the night a couple of Sundays ago in San Diego. New wall. Um, but anyways, if we, we can ex discuss those disagreements with Richard or you guys, um, any of you and all that. Anyways, let me get to Philip has an off qu the wall question a little bit, but not too off the wall. Um, Philip out of Georgia. How are you doing? James, I'm doing well. How are you, sir? Doing fine. Yeah, um, I was just, uh, I, I was kind of, uh, just skipping over some videos the other day, and I, I and I, I, uh, I skipped to this one. It was a Joe Rogan interviewing Bill Maher. Yeah. And Joe Rogan, he kind of like, uh, he's, he's kind of a, I don't know if you want to call it a thought leader, but I mean, I've heard, you know, most people say that he's the number one podcaster in the world, and I've you know, heard I think stuff like that. A lot of people listen to him, and um, I I just caught this one part of their conversation where they were just kind of talking, you know, just casually about porn. And Joe Rogan was like, "Yeah, you know, it's just one of those things." Uh, he, he he said, uh, nine out of ten of those of the those girls that you see in porn are actually, you know, sexual assault victims." And the way he said it, just kind of casually in the conversation, is like it was just uh, kind of happenstance part of the the porn industry, but. It really, it really kind of shook me a bit because I was like, "Man, I wonder, I wonder how much truth there is to that." Stay close I to your phone, I... Philip. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Th that's a little better. Yeah. Yeah, that, that just uh, that just really, really struck me because I think yeah. there's, I think there's a lot of truth to that. I think about ninety percent of the of the girls who are in porn are sexually assaulted or sexually abused as kids. Maybe, man. I mean, people are people are treated in ways. Um, maybe by their mothers, parents, uh, that is, you could consider it, like, sexually perverted without it even being sexual, though. Because, um, because this, like, the evil, evil spirit is gonna, um, is gonna infect you and bring out all kinds of weird different symptoms in different people. So I don't know if that's true or not, and that's, uh, I don't know where he got that information. Who was he talking to again? He was 
was talking to Bill Maher. Okay. I mean, Interesting. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know what anybody else thinks, but it, it seems to me that, that, that porn is basically a psychological weapon. Yeah, it's evil. It's, um, it's just, it's like pot. It just dulls the masses. And then yeah, it, no, I mean, no it, kids. And it's literally, literally the way, the way it's dumped into our population. And nobody ever asks any questions about how porn is free. I mean, nobody ever asks Ads, any questions about I would say advertisements. I don't know. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense, but it's, it's obviously a psychological weapon. And it, it's traumatizing for young kids. And yeah. I heard, it's almost, I heard, and I don't know if it's true. But I heard, I don't know if it's true, but I heard <laughs> that the Israelis sent porn to, like, the Palestinians to weaken them. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. Uh, it is very true. I don't, is I don't it? know if, I don't know if that, that particular part is true, but I, I, I know for a fact that porn is, it, it, it is used as a psychological Yeah, weapon. it destroys, a, it weakens a culture, it weakens men. It's pathetic. Yeah, it, and... It's, and Stupid, but it ha- but it's woven its way into our society in such a way, and and people like Joe Rogan, the way I mean, if you watch the video, and just it, it's just a, it's a casual part of his life. You know, he he accepts it, and right, he he's he's taken away. It, but... He's part of the the people who the the shame is no longer there. They, they've taken away the shame of it, and he's both victim and and perpetrator now because he's influencing other people, setting a bad example. It's a shame. Well. I'm glad I, I'm glad to hear you, um, you know, up on it too. I'm glad that, yeah. that was really cool to hear you say that about Israel and Palestine because <laughs> I don't know if it's born, true, but that's what born, I heard. <laughs> born is a weapon. Born is a weapon. Yeah. It is a psychological weapon. Thanks, man. I appreciate you, Philip. By the way, what All do right. you think of Trump? How is Trump doing? Um, I I will vote for Trump. I support Trump. I will vote for Trump. Trump's a billionaire. I love Trump. <laughs> How do you, what's your opinion? How is he? Oh, okay. He hung up. Whatever. Uh, treasure chest. <laughs> You're laughing. <laughs> All right. You guys hear that? <laughs> We're opening the chest. <laughs> click the chest. By the time you hear me say that, it's too late. <laughs> it's clicking, right? It's clicking. Okay. Yeah. It's, oh, click it, guys. Click it or tick it. Clickety clack, watch your back. <laughs> this, is what, this is the stuff that I type in under the Jesse Lee Peterson uh, D Live on Jesse Lee Peterson's stuff. Um, click, 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 click it or ticket. Obama chest, redistribution of lemons. <laughs> Things like that. Uh, I have my shiny forehead today. Um, Mike AZ, AZ Mike something on D Live said, stare into my soul. Like, probably because I'm like staring at the. At the, um, I have like bug eyes, kind of like AOC, um, kind of like, uh, Adam Schiff, and others. I'm trying to work on them. <laughs> Anyways, back to this. So, uh, Richard Spencer likes Bernie and Tulsi on his best days. <laughs> you guys hear that? He needs to see my Bernie expose. From a day earlier. And he needs to see Joel's Tulsi expose. When Tulsi kneeled down and gave her husband a new ring <laughs> that he lost surfing or something. Anyways. I don't know if the treasure chest opened. Screener, can you tell if the treasure chest opened? Congratulations, treasure chest recip- recipients, if it worked. I'm on Chrome. Chrome is not good. Anton Sugar says, The Christians who sin, that's a crime to drug someone without them knowing. Just a little FYI. That's fair. It should be. Oh, he doesn't know DLive. DLive is the yellow one. Um, Anton Sugar said, it seems like there were many Spencer fans in the D Live chat. Sorry, Hake, I'm going to D Live because he's dead here, <laughs> Anton. Thank you, man. Well, I appreciate you trying. Uh, that was on Twitch, <laughs> but at least you had all of your chats um, isolated just for me to read them. <laughs> what are the people on Facebook saying? Hey, Betty, Ashley, Kathy. 
So, uh, you know, one thing that I says 102.7 Kiss FM sent to your followers. Right on. Congratulations, D Live followers. So, one thing that I learned from uh, Jesse Lee Peterson, and I will be- get back to calls um, stick with what you know. So you guys that are criticizing Trump and you don't know why, why he's not doing this or that, you know, free speech um, and getting rid of the anchor baby law, which is a, a fake law, different things. Don't jump to conclusions about what you think you know. I had a super interesting call this week from a guy who thought that Jesse Lee Peterson was actually saying that, Je- that he is of the white race on the inside. And therefore... This guy thinks that, well, is joking around, I guess, he, I'm presuming, I hope he was joking, that Jesse's as mentally ill as a transgender. No, but that's not what he, he doesn't know that Jesse meant white on the inside, black on the outside. He doesn't know what Jesse meant by that. He doesn't know that he meant washed white as snow, like what uh, the blood of Jesus is supposed to do to you or something. But he just A-S-S-U-M-E-D, the dumbest interpretation possible. Just made it. That's what I call a mocker, because they're mocking rather than trying to understand, or maybe he can't understand, can't even try to understand. I don't know. Um, I tried to get him to like realize that he didn't know what it meant, but he was just assuming. But uh, he just kept on kind of talking. I hear people talk about like pedophile rings. Um, or underage sex trafficking stuff, which is probably a more accurate term for it, that many people believe is going on in the government, etc., with this uh, Jeffrey Epstein thing and all that. Who worked for Mossad, by the way, I heard. It was was in the media. Daily Star, I think. Or people saying, so-and-so is homosexual. Or a sodomite. I don't like that word. But some people use it, whatever. When you actually don't know, no, with proof and stuff, or claiming like Bill Cosby is is guilty, right? That's, to me, that's woman stuff. I heard a liberal woman, I was eating dinner, I think I've told you about this, claim that there's evidence Trump sexually assaulted people. Ridiculous. So, stick with what you know, don't be assuming that you know. You can be like, Leary, I suspect that there's... Underage sex trafficking going on rampant, but I don't know for sure. You could say that, but just stick with what you know. That way you stay sane. Um, Let me get to Michael, and then I'll get back to some more of this about having class, respect for people, even if you suspect that they're in a fallen state, right? For example, I'm going to elaborate on uh, respect to the closet. (laughs) Because a lot of you guys like to say, so-and-so is homosexual. Uh, Respect the closet. Because if they're not outwardly homosexual, I'll get into it. Then you should uh, respect that. You should want people to go back into the closet and then then overcome it from inside the closet. (laughs) So, I'll get back, I'll get more on that. Um, Michael, out of Maryland, first time caller. What's up? Uh, Hi, hey, thanks for taking my call. Yeah. I wanted to comment about the Richard Spencer interview that you did. Yeah. <clears throat> Richard Spencer and other people who complained about Trump not doing anything. Yeah. <clears throat> their, their, their distrust is misplaced. <clears throat> the real problem is that Congress is not passing bills to go to uh, Trump's desk for him to sign into law. He has not received much in the way of cooperation from Congress at all throughout his entire time in office. So if you want to complain, you should do is call your congressman and say, why aren't you passing bills to help Trump uh, with his agenda? That's fair. I haven't heard that advice in a long time. I remember when I was working and listening to the Jesse Lee Peterson show, I started calling my my congress, my female congressman. This office, I got hung up on a lot. By, they seemed speak, They seemed like they might be gay. I don't know. Um, well, they're not. They're not really interested. <clears throat> terribly interested the helpers, in what I mean. their constituents have to say. Yeah. But still, if you keep uh, keep nagging them about something, that's where we, the people, have our influence and our control. Right. So yeah, you gotta to exercise it. 
That's true. You need to hold the whole government r- accountable. Right, exactly. The the presidency didn't used to be that powerful, and it seems like it's losing its power again. And that's probably a good thing. Hopefully yeah. it... Because um, I don't think it used to matter that much who the president was, because it was a little bit more of an equal um, balance of powers, is what I heard when I was a kid. But I don't know if, I don't know. I heard that Congress, and there's all kinds of things about the difference between the House and the Senate that have changed, and that's a shame. So, well, I don't know how how much it's changed. I think that people have just uh, not, people have kind of, people have changed. That is the biggest one. That is true. By far, that's the that is the worst aspect of society. That's why Jesse's mission of rebuilding men is that's it. That's it's, it's because now, once yeah. we're men, then we're not going to listen to the women <laughs> with their dumb ideas. Some of some of the women are going to have some good ideas, but most of them are, have dumb ideas. Um, we're not going to we're going to kick the illegals out. We're going to close the borders. We're going to and not put up with this. Gay stuff, feeling sorry for the gays, and just so you let them run rampant over you. All that madness. I, I agree with all of that. Yeah. And men so what, surrendering their families, the children growing up weak, pathetic, shy. Right. Yeah. One last point I'd like to make to you. I'm 67 years old, and the reason I point that out is I want you to know that your show has intergenerational appeal. Thank you, man. I was thinking about that. It's an honor to hear from guys like you. Well, it should be. Yeah, definitely it is. Because okay, well, a lot of you guys you. are down to earth and know right. stuff that's... Well, right, we, we're down to earth and we have a lot of experience behind it. Yeah. A lot of history. Right, and a lot of the, a lot of the alt-right <clears throat> younger guys, they're, um, they're mad at the boomers. And I understand it. Um, what I, are they mad about what? Mad that the boomers let the country go, basically. And well, we did. Yeah, and it's true, but um, yeah. but there is there's a lot to learn from the older generations. So there is it, what what the <clears throat> the younger generation should be learning from our mistakes, the boomers' mistakes. Right, and we made plenty of them. Yep, true. And what happened to the generation before the boomers? That the boomers became like the boomers are. <laughs> right. What was That's, wrong with the uh, silent generation or whatever? They were, well, something they were from something was wrong with how, and those guys I respect them too, like my gr- grandparents. Yeah. But something was wrong with them for them to raise um, the boomers to become the boomers. Yeah, and yes, you can say the outer culture was very corrupt, you know, subversion, subversion, and stuff like that. But subversion didn't have to happen. So, anyways, right. I appreciate it, Michael. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Take care. Talk to you some other time. Yeah, definitely. Bye. So, um, uh, let me let me read super chats real fast, and then I'll get to RC out of South Carolina. DJ Hardmouse says the H zero L zero cost never happened. <laughs> Thank you, DJ Hardmouse. A lot of people believe that. I don't know. It's best to leave it as an I don't know if you don't know. But whatever. Uh, Giovanni A. Good afternoon slash morning fams. Smiley face, thumbs up, praying. Skip Mc... Skip. I don't know. He puts his last name. I might as well put Skip McBurney. Says, hey, I'm looking forward to you having a two-hour show. Uh, I guess this is white black power fists. (laughs) I don't know. SOBC. Contributing to the Hake Fund. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. D. Martin III says, tell it like it is. I was thinking about, oh. David from Kentucky says, tell it like it is. I think I, uh, I think I emailed you on how to change uh, your username. (laughs) Sorry, man. I I really respect, uh, I think David is his name. Hot computer smell. Thank you, Jimmy Morgan. Hey, James Hake, President Trump is doing amazingly, amazingly. 
<laughs> Mari Uvaldo. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Um, good morning, James. When are you going to wear a suit and shave your beard? You still haven't answered my question. Have a blessed week. I forget what your question was, <laughs> but I don't know. Maybe I sh I've thought about it. I, maybe I should take a cue from Nic Nicholas Fuentes um, and uh, <laughs> have a suit. I don't know. Um, and then uh, Jib Jab says, keep the beard. <laughs> Thank you, man. Appreciate you guys. So, RC out of South Carolina. What do you say? Oh, James, I was just calling to, to I want to preface what I'm about to say real quick. Okay. With letting you know that I was a Trump supporter, you know, from day one when he started running. I was excited he got elected and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, I'm going to start with that. But now i got to get into the next, this next part. So, we're at the end of his term. First and term. When this this term, right? Yeah. But see, that's what I'm getting at. Three years into it, we're three years into it. Right. Yeah. So I feel like there's two different type of Trump supporters. There's people that are happy, and we're all excited that Trumps got elected and Hillary didn't, and that's enough. And then there's the Trump supporters that are asking the questions: Why aren't things? being done that were promised. So just a minute ago, What's you not were being done? Caller, What's not being done? The wall did not start being built until just now. It's been being built. That's not no, true. No, it has not. Yeah, it has. That's not true. Yes, it is true. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No. Nope. Yes. Well, we'll skip past We'll skip past that. All right. Here, I'll give you some stuff that you can't debate. All right. More anti-gun legislation has passed under Trump than under Obama. True or not true? I don't know. Well, was look at Virginia. Was that happening under Obama? Virginia is Virginia. It's not under Trump. Look at California. Has it gotten worse or better? I don't know. I don't know if it's gotten worse or better under California. It's a good question. And that's the, but on. those are state Come laws. Back. Those are state laws, man. <laughs> what do you expect the president to do about state laws? So you're telling you don't think that he has the power to override those things? No. You think he... Okay. Why are you leaning... Okay. Why are you guys leaning so heavily on Trump to solve all your problems? It's pathetic. Why are you not holding his feet to the fire for what he said he was going to get done? Why is he's more He's doing what he said... Speech? Hold on. He's doing what he said he was going to get done. No. More anti-free speech legislation has passed yeah, under that's Trump true. than under any other president. Julian Assange released information after being told to by Trump. Then he got locked up. He has not given him a pardon. Roger Stone played a, a pivotal role in getting these, Trump elected. These things he got locked up. No pardon. Owen these, Stroyer gets arrested twice for trying to help and pushing. No pardon. No no intervention. No nothing. What do you expect? To, why you, you're just nagging though. You're bitching and complaining. It's it's kind of pathetic. That's you're not. You think you're holding your his feet to the fire, but you don't have his but, ear. So you're just complaining, but, and you're turning other pe impressionable people against him. Normal people, normal people are still with Trump, but you guys are just like women. It's complaining. All I'm hearing is nag, nag, nag. When you know that the country's most of the country's gone, well, you should expect this type of evil to be happening, especially because Trump is in there. They're going to try to even so harder when, to fight uh, against what's right. You know that so that's true. So when we had everything in the legislation, hey, hey, listen, House, listen, RC, Senate, Congress, look, what got done? Nothing, because we didn't have everything. Caller, hey, RC, 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 we didn't have everything. Yes, we did. No, we did not. We had rhinos. Yeah. He's drained see, the swamp. See, we had Paul see what I'm Ryan. Saying, but the last, hang on. But the last caller, you guys said we need to hold all of government accountable. Yes. And when I'm telling you that I'm trying to hold them accountable. You say I'm complaining and whining. Yes, because you're holding so him accountable for stuff that's not even hit his responsibility. Dude, he's building the wall this close to the next re-election to he's, get re-elected. He's and been the building term, the wall. He'll say, oh, I don't have the funds anymore. They, they didn't approve the funds. Watch. It'll happen. See, that's so pathetic. You're like a female, <laughs> RC. No, when you vote someone in and elect them, 
He's you been want the things to get done. He's not getting it done. You haven't been paying why attention. Paying, why are we still paying 30, 35% on taxes, fam? You haven't been paying attention, RC. You're just jumping from thing to thing now, RC. You're you're acting because like nothing's getting done. Yes, really it is great. getting done. And, you're just not paying still attention. Jump on Trump like he's great, and he's not doing that great. He's doing he's quite well. He's doing. RC, who's done better ever? Who's done better in your lifetime? Who's done less? Who's done better? <laughs> who's done less? Answer the question, RC. Otherwise, you're a loser. Mm, no, I'm asking you a question. No, who's I asked you the less? question. Okay, well, who's who's done better? Answer who's done better, RC. You can't. Who's done better for who? For Republicans? Overall, for the country, as a president. Nobody. But why are we talking? Okay, so let's say that I say... RC, okay, I gotta right, go, man. It's the end of the show. am I talking about everybody else, or am I talking about Trump? Why are you trying to talk about everybody else? Because I've talked about Trump, he's he's been fulfilling his promises. If you pay attention, he's been working on the wall since day one. And he's been he's been doing the, all this stuff, but you're just listening to the naysayers, and your evil is working through you. No, I'm looking up the facts. No, you're not listening on, to. You're citing facts to disguise the truth. The fire. No, man. Anyways, RC, I gotta go. Let's talk again. Next term, even less will get done. Watch. That you're evil. You're evil for saying even that. Even less will get done. You Watch. don't know the fa- the tr- the future. Why are you so pathetic? Hey, cash, cash app. Let's bet money on it. <laughs> no. The wall will stop. I got to go. <laughs> All right, guys. Take care. Church on Sunday. I mean, church at 11. Rebuildingtheman.com slash church. All right.